I know that lots of you guys have been crushing it with the bishop's opening and therefore let me share with you another powerful way of using it to your chess opening arsenal. Now obviously the bishop's opening arises with you going bishop to c4 and in most cases your opponents are going to go knight f6, just naturally developing a knight and attacking your central pawn. But we're not going to back down, we're going to counterattack with the move pawn d4. And guess what? Now your opponent is already at the crossroad. He can either, either take this pawn or this pawn. And one of these moves is already quite a serious mistake that basically puts them at the risk of losing within the next like 10 moves. Can you guess which one? It's not that simple, which is good for us because your opponents will often go wrong. Now the wrong move is knight takes e4. Now what's wrong with it? Well after you recapture it turns out that this knight on, his, on e4 is kind of vulnerable. It's far away from the rest of his army. Plus, your pawn on e5 is doing a good job taking away these two squares where this knight from e4 could possibly retreat. Which means that on the next moves you can attack and capture this knight in various different ways. Now, another cool thing is that in this position, the two most played moves by black, which are also two most tempting moves to play, which are bishop c5 and pawn to d5, both are wrong and both lead to an immediate disaster for black. So let's start off with the move pawn d5. When I checked it in the database it was quite funny because this blunder was played by even players rated 2900 and 3000, which I can hardly explain but anyway, that's what happens. So black obviously wants to solidify their knight and attack your bishop which would be all cool with one little uh, nuance, you know, it's just a blunder. Because you've got this queen back here on d1 which they overlooked, so you can just grab the pawn you know, your bishop is defended, they cannot take it, they will lose the queen that way, so they just gave up a pawn for no reason, plus you attack this knight on e4. And as the knight goes back, the fun doesn't stop here because now you have another powerful follow-up. It's bishop takes f7, we're sacrificing our bishop's opening bishop in order to win the game within a couple moves. Now, they can't really capture it because then they will lose the queen on d8 and you'll be up a queen. But they can't do anything anyway, because if they try to play king e7 and hold on to the queen, then you just continue with the skewer bishop g5 and you win the queen anyway. So that's how you can defeat even strong players within 7 moves and it's absolutely phenomenal. Another tempting option for black to play here, and it is also the most played move, is bishop c5. Now they hope to attack your pawn on f2 and they think that it helps them to attack, which can't be further from the truth, <laughs> because it actually helps you to attack them. Now not only they have this handy knight, but they also have this handy undefended bishop. And there are even two ways to win this position. One is queen d5, where you put pressure here, which is checkmate in one, and here. Plus the bishop is also somewhat handy. Now, so queen d5 objectively is the most powerful move. Like, a slight inconvenience is that after bishop takes f2, you still have to move your king, and although on the next move you'll win one of their minor pieces, and you'll be up control and in a winning position, your king had to move, and it's a slight inconvenience. Now, with that being said, I think that it's even more practical in this position to win in another way. Instead of playing queen d5, you can first play this in between move bishop takes f7 attack of the king and after king recaptures you then follow up with queen to d5 so it's kind of similar idea we just like, reorder the moves and now it's double attack to the king and the knight therefore the king has to move and now you pick up the knight and what's beautiful about this position is that it is basically easily winning why because your opponent has nothing to do now let's not forget that not only you're up a pawn and that's an important pawn that no longer covers the king making it vulnerable but even more importantly his king has moved back and forth meaning that it can no longer castle it'll have to stay right here in the middle of the board obstructing his development and like it's really difficult for your opponent to do anything like you'll just play you know develop your knights play bishop g5 attacking the queen castle is very simple and for your opponent, it's very hard to do anything. If he ever tries to move this pawn, that fails to this discover check. So your opponent's kind of stuck there and you win with very simple moves. So that's why I think that that would be the most guaranteed way for you to win the game. Now, that covered one of the common options with his knight taking our central pawn. How about the correct move, pawn takes d4? Well, in this case, I do not recommend that you recapture. That would expose your queen early in the game, which is usually not recommended. So instead, you play knight of 3 just developing, prioritizing your quick development and attack, that's what we usually love to do in any kind of gambits. Now, at this point, many of your pawns will take this pawn right here. Why? Because otherwise, at some point, it's easy for you to push this pawn forward and chase this knight away, and it feels uncomfortable. Plus, you can always take back this pawn on d4 in one of the next moves, you attack it twice already, therefore, it feels uncomfortable, and many of them will take this pawn because it looks like there is no immediate danger anyway.
However, I really love when they do this, because that puts them at a very dangerous position. After queen takes d4, you bring your queen into the game, you attack the knight, and the knight has to go back, so let's say they go knight of 6, and now after knight to c3, Although they're up a pawn and objectively the position is about equal, the computer says that it's about equal, but in reality it's way, way easier to play it with white. Thanks to your development advantage, you develop a crushing attack before they had a chance to comprehend what the heck is going on here. That usually is the case. So what do they do? Well, of course they see your exposed queen, so they want to play knight c6 and win a tempo. But we're fine with that, because we're not actually losing a tempo, we just reposition our queen to a quite active position on h4, where it puts pressure down these files, and in the future, since we anticipate our opponent to castle, it's gonna be really helpful. Now, still your opponent feels that his position is good, he's gonna play bishop e7, he thinks that you are doing something wrong by exposing your queen, and he will somehow x-ray and attack it. But again, it's not gonna happen in reality. So what we do is we play bishop g5, just putting even more pressure down this diagonal. And at some point your opponent may be tempted to play h6. Sooner or later they will probably have to do this, otherwise they have to endure this pressure that you put on them. But this move is actually another step in the wrong direction, which is cool. Because h6 turns out to be a harmless move. Now, they can't take your bishop anyway because the rook is pinned. And therefore you can stay cool and just ignore it and castle queenside. Now, castling queenside has the advantage of not only putting your king to safety, but also putting your rook to this active position. Now, they realize that they can't take the bishop because the rook is hanging back there, therefore they wish to castle, and now they hope that your bishop is attacked and you'll trade or go back or something like this, but we do none of that. Instead, we sacrifice the bishop right here and win the game. Because after this trade, we can totally expose the king. And let's not forget that black is underdeveloped, like most of their pieces are still dozing, do nothing, and the king is dead open. Now in the following moves, you're gonna play knight g5, maybe bishop d3, and you know, then go to h7 and win the game, something like this. Uh, one of the cool blunders for black here would be going knight g4. They hope to expect, you know, they hope that your queen is gonna go back. Uh, but we always upset black, right? We never do what they hoped for us to do. So instead of going back, you play queen g6. And it turns out that the pawn is pinned, so he can't take you, he has to move the king. After that you just win this knight, and then you continue with an extra material, and you attack this totally exposed king. Therefore, that clearly does not work for black. Sometimes they go knight h7, which is a better option, but it still loses the game. Now, black tries to cover their queen, and they possibly hope for bishop g5 check, they hope to trade off some material here after your knight takes and they recapture with the queen. Now, there are many arrows here, but we're not gonna dive into this, because you're gonna shut it down with rook d5. Pretty cool move. Now, you control this square, therefore they can't go there anymore, that would just blunder a piece, and after whatever else they do, let's say d6 or anything else, you finish this rook lift with rook h5, and all of a sudden, they're defenseless in the next move, you're gonna checkmate them with queen h7 or queen h8, something like this, and it's all over. Let me also share with you another cool game where Black seemingly played all correct moves and yet that was a fascinating finish to this game. Now remember last time they played knight c6 trying to win a tempo but we shifted the queen to the king side and we were pretty happy about that. In this game Black tried to play c6, their plan was to go d5 and to occupy the center and to shut down your bishop. So let's see how you're gonna treat this thing. We still play all the same moves, you go bishop g5 putting pressure here, pinning the knight, after they go bishop e7, you castle queen side. That's what we usually do here when I put our rook to this open position. Now, black played the move which they hoped would bring them a good position, d5. And of course, at first, looks like, yeah, they kind of finished their attack, they're up a pawn, they occupy the center, life's cool. But white found very good ways to develop their attack. First, white played rook e1. Why? Why do we left this bishop undefended? Well, it turns out that black can't take it. If they do, that's gonna be a blunder. Pretty cool one, because after queen takes d8, that is actually a checkmate. Our queen is guarded by the rook, so he, he can't take it with his king, but he also can't take it with the bishop because the bishop is pinned. That was the point of bringing our rook right here. Quite a subtle trap, really. Let's play it back. Now, therefore, if black sees that this thing is not an option, because, you know, the bishop is pinned, they may just castle, thinking, okay, now you have to move the bishop. Now this is a threat. White still didn't touch the bishop, instead they played queen h4. The move that we love playing, you know, because we possibly target this pawn in the long run, but also they can't take the bishop still, because this time 
the pawn has been down to the queen. So black thought to himself, okay, let me just finish my development, he played bishop e6. And now white finally played bishop d3, but it was not a defensive move, it was an attacking move, because now we simply threaten to checkmate black on the next move. Like, I mean, right now it's defended by the knight, but if black plays anything, like some move, we want to eliminate the knight and then checkmate black with queen takes h7. Therefore, they gotta do something to stop this. Let's take it back. And h6 would still fail to the same thing that we have seen before, just bishop h6, and after that you completely expose the king, and you're gonna finish it off with knight e5, maybe some rook lift down there, and, uh, you know, we're gonna win easily. So that's not an option. Finally, what can they do? Knight d7 looks like a very solid move, which holds everything and keeps things protected, because now if you take on f6, they're gonna replace one knight with the other knight, and this brotherhood hopefully will save their position. That's what they hope for. But in reality, they fail to another thing. Slightly unusual thing, but nevertheless, it wins in this position. And actually, let this be a puzzle of the day. So if you can't find a winning move for white, please write it down in the comments below. Like, it's not a forced checkmate, but you got a winning position. On a side note, that's the beauty of being a part of the Igor nation, because if your opponents analyze this position with Stockfish, then Stockfish would tell them that knight takes e4 is a good move for black, which gives black a slightly better position, about equal, maybe slightly better for black. Which is so misleading, because in reality I think that if you can get to this point where your opponent captures this pawn because he feels that you can push the pawn forward and attack the knight, like, four moves into the game, in reality you have like 90% chance of winning, I would say, especially in bleeds. Because after queen takes d4, you have huge advantage in development, great chances for attack, and any solid mistake of your opponent leads to them being immediately crushed. Therefore, definitely it's a great thing for you if your opponent goes this way. Now, let's take it back. I think that practically it's much better for black to avoid being greedy and instead to play knight c6, just develop in pieces. Now, this position, there are many ways for you to deal with it. I recommend that you simply castle. I think that it's the easiest and also most promising move for you to play. Why? Wait, basically still you have all the same ideas at hand. You can play e5 and chase away this knight on the next move or maybe to get back your sacrifice pawn on d4 after knight takes d4. And due to that, most common moves of black are either a bishop c5, trying to hold on to this extra pawn, or knight takes e4, still hoping that after that they'll play d5 and protect the knight. Now, the most played move is bishop c5, which is natural. They develop a bishop, they put it to the usual square, like how they usually do it in the Italian game, they hold on to this extra pawn, they're getting ready to cancel, feels like they're doing all right. However, you go e5, attacking this knight, after the knight goes, you... now we can't take this pawn, because it's now defending twice, though that would blunder a knight. Um, well, not really, actually, their knight is also hanging. But anyway, the strongest move is to play c3. And now you want to take here and attack the bishop, also having a strong center, therefore they'll usually take here on c3, missing another cool tactics, which is kind of standard, because we did it before. Bishop takes f7. And after king takes, we follow up with queen to d5, we have seen this motif before, with this double attack. And after the king goes back, we now pick up the bishop, which allows you to attack after that without any material sacrifices. Because now, again, let's not forget that the king has moved, meaning it can never castle in this game. It's, it'll have to stay right here in the middle of the board, being totally exposed. And then you want to do all the usual things. Knight takes c3, bishop to g5, hitting the queen, and you just win the game with very simple moves. However, here there is the beginning of the blunder fest. When I check the database, quite often black plays queen e7, offering you an exchange of queens. Of course, we don't want that, we want to checkmate him, so we just use this temple to pick up this pawn. Now we want to play bishop g5, h3, and all this cool stuff. So they think, okay, since it feels like very uncomfortable for them anyway, they think, let's take this pawn. But that's another blunder, because now after the exchange, they fail due to this pin along the e-file, so the knight cannot move because there is queen and king standing behind. And if they guard the knight, then you play a four and still you win the knight. But the fun doesn't stop here, because quite often they play knight f3 check, thinking that they've been very smart, creative, and after you take it with a queen, your rook will remain undefended and they'll pick it up and they'll win. But of course, we don't do this, we just take the knight with our pawn, which means that they gave up the knight for no reason. Moreover, now not only they're losing the knight, but they're also about to lose their queen. <laughs> because now we're pinning the queen. And after they go bishop e6, we make use of the same tactical motif for the second time in a row. We go f5, and this time we're winning the bishop because of this same pin. So it's pretty cool. 
And the fun doesn't stop here, because if I'm not mistaken, the most played move by black here is yet another blunder. It's queen to g5. They were hoping that it's a double attack here and here, but in reality, it just blunders the queen. Bishop takes g5, and then you still win the bishop, so you completely destroy their position. All right, so far we talked about various cool lines, starting from bishop to c5, which allows you to push the pawn forward and attack the knight, and then build up your attack. How about knight takes e4 at this position? Now, this time you cannot recapture the queen, because the knight is already out, and that would be a blunder, so you don't do this. What do you do then? Well, then you play rook e1, because now you have already castled, and you can take advantage of the pain. At first it looks like d5 is just winning the game for black, defending the knight, attacking their bishop, but you've got a cool tactics here. You take on d5, and after the recapture, you then follow up with this fancy double pin, knight to c3 move. Now, he can take it with his knight, because the knight is pinned down to the king. And similarly, he can't take it with a pawn, because then they will lose the queen that stands behind the pawn. It means that the queen has to move, and after that you have this massive attack, their king is centralized. Objectively speaking, the position is equal if black can find all proper defensive moves. But you still have a lot of traps here at, at your disposal, and therefore even to reach that equality, black still has to be really careful. I've got another video where I shared uh, the game when Wesley sold, and one of the top players in the world, number 5 in the world at his best, kind of got trapped into one of the following traps as black and lost the game badly. I'll share the video right here, check it out so that you'll know some additional common attacking ideas in this opening. And if you want to hone your attacking skills generally, so that you can find proper attacking moves across any different openings, then check out this free masterclass right there.